to the flag. joining us this evening and she was um she actually applied for the position and she was um she was recognized with um being selected by the committee um and on that committee are school board members and also um this the past um student school board member has impact on this also as well as um her co co-partner um cole had impact on who was going to be selected for for this position and so we welcome Haley and um, this is a I think this is the first time that we've actually been able to have our new student school board member join us during the summer months and to kind of get a taste for it before the actual school year starts so welcome we're very proud of you and excited to have you here on the board thank you mm -hmm. all right uh, we'll move on item five Taking a motion to approve the agenda, noting the revisions box in the upper right corner. So moved. Motion by Member King. Do you need a second? Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Any discussion on that? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, is there anyone here tonight to address open forum? All right, with none, we will uh, move on to reports. We will start with our uh, principals. Uh, Ryan, you got for us. Yeah. So we had our end of the year carnival on May 30th. Due to the weather forecast, we moved it from the track to the gyms. Um, it was a big success. The students enjoyed all of the activities in there. I want to say a big thank you to Mrs. Fredette and all the teachers and staff members who helped plan the day, and also to <coughs> A lot of our community members who came in and volunteered for that day. Um, summer programming, we currently have three summer programs running in, in our elementary. We have our ESY, um, our Bridge to Kindergarten, and our Targeted Services program. We have about 60 kids attending regularly. Um, this program took a field trip to the 100 acre farmstead today, and it looked like they had a great time. They, they took a bunch of pictures, so I got to see those, and I know they're going to be posted on um, our website soon. Uh, meetings, we've had a couple big meetings here. Um, on the 12th, um, the three administrators and Judge Ross and I went to Graham uh, for an MTSS meeting. Uh, we were looking at the data um, and the review that uh, they presented to us. Um, was it October or November that we originally met with them? We originally met, to, I believe it was October 16th or November 16th, something like that. It's been going on for that whole last school year. So we met with a bunch of the area um, school districts and we looked at how we can improve our MTSS system and how it, or if the co-op could support that. Um, on the 15th, I attended a virtual meeting hosted by MSBA, looking at um, the required updates to our handbooks. Uh, with the new legislation, there's a lot of additional things that we need to include in our handbooks. Uh, so I was able to attend that and um, make changes to our handbooks here uh, to meet all of those requirements. Um, this morning, I attended the Minnesota Council of Teachers of Mathematics introductions to the math standards. So we have new math standards that are coming out um, 
it's listed as 2022 is the year of the math standards. Um, they'll be fully implemented in the year 2028. So we reviewed how they look different and then the implementation plan for the next, I guess that'll be five years. And then on the 26th, I'll be attending the legislation update uh, for resource training and solutions. And some projects I'm working on this summer. Um, currently, I am planning a science of reading professional development for all of our pre-K through sixth grade staff, or teaching staff. Um, get more experience and a firm understanding of the new legislation and the READ Act that was passed here. And update the look of my weekly communications to both families and to our staff members. So those are the things I'm focusing on this summer. All right, any uh, questions on that? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right, Sue. So. Okay. With our summer learning, um, we have 13 students that are signed up for credit recovery, and we only have about eight of them that are attending regularly. Um, this is our second week in that and with that we have um, three classes that have already been completed. So we've got some of the kids are really motivated and um, we actually have Adam Halverson who is running that this year and he's kind of right on top of those kids and, and the parents also. So making sure that if a student doesn't show up he's calling and emailing the parents and finding out where they are and letting, you know hoping that they come in and, and finish the courses. So, so far, they're doing really, really well with that. Um, schedules were completed by Mrs. DeFlamenek prior to the school year ending, and of course, we always have to look to see if there's going to be any schedule changes, and we hope there isn't any schedule changes because there were way too many um, changes last summer, but um, so far, everything is looking pretty good with that. We've had several meetings, um, including interviewing for open positions. In the high school, we're still looking for applicants for our EDD and our CTE business slash math teacher. And so we'll be working on that, um, hoping that we can get that out um, and filled soon. Also had a meeting with the PLC facilitator where we discussed what our focus in the high school for our PLCs is going to be next year. And so... Um, the high school is a little bit behind in PBIS compared to what the elementary is, and so that's one of our focuses for our um, PLCs this next year is that we want to make sure that we're having those meaningful, direct meetings to discuss it and get it more into place and make sure that the students know what it's about. Um, I think, you know, the high school staff are really good at knowing what it is and what we're planning on doing, and we're doing a lot of it. It's just that we really haven't rolled it out to the students very well, and that's something that we have to do better this year. And so um, one of the plans is, is that during our advocacy, our student councils, um, we want to have them actually making some videos that are going over some of the components of the PBIS and having the students make the, the videos and then share an offer with the students. So that's something that we're really looking forward to. Um, and then also with our Carl Perkins. So every year we get funds for Carl Perkins, and so that's our CTE courses. So our industrial technology, our agriculture, and then our business. And every five years, though, we have to um, request program approval. So we have to take all of our courses we have to align them to CTE standards, and we have to submit syllabi, and we also have to say like who we're gonna allow to be in these in these classes, and um, how we're gonna have community members with us. So every five years, we have to rewrite our proposal, and so we've met two days. Um, Tanner Hagland, who, uh, Laura, Krista, and I have met for two days, and we've gone over. I know Tanner has all of his done, um, and I know Laura was just finishing up a couple of hers, but we're hoping to get those submitted. They're not actually due until later on this fall, but you know, once the school year starts, everyone gets busy and it's hard to find that time to carve out and get that stuff done. So, um, so we are almost done with that, and then of course we'll have to work on the business um, portion of that. Yeah, but, but so we spent two days working on that. Um, some of the projects that I've had to work on is that, you know, we've done our JERS report um, as administrators, so we always have to put in our student discipline um, reports, and so those 
are completed. I did it for the high school and for the ALP. <coughs> and then um, post-test editing, so that's something that after MCA tests are done, we have to look at any discrepancies that we have compared to what the state has. And usually what it is is there's a difference in how we're reporting our MARS. And so sometimes it's just a MARS fix that needs to be done. And then sometimes it's, uh, you know, if a student say, say they were not in, they were enrolled in our district but were receiving medical care at a different location, then we have to submit that kind of information. So they just kind of want to know how come this kid didn't test or why can't we find a test for this kid? And, and sometimes it's just the first time. But so all of that has been completed. Um, working on the first draft of the, of the student handbook. I did try and copy it into our drive. So it went from a Word doc to a Google doc and it's it looks fine. It's just that for whatever reason, none of the highlights of any of the changes transferred over. So we'll need to send that through email to you just so that you can see any of the strikeouts and the highlights and stuff. Um, and then also the staff handbook. There's some changes that have been made to that, a few additions. And so I will send those to you guys just so that you can see them. Um, and then if you have any suggestions for anything, you know, make sure you, you let me know. Um, for high school curriculum for this next year, we don't really need anything, but I do want to put a bug in your ear for social studies. So our social studies curriculum, most of it is 15 years or older. And so at some point we are going to need to replace that. But I do want to thank you for taking care of our science, our math, and our English over the last couple of years. So that is that has been such a blessing. So we, um, we just need to look at social studies and then we're going to be looking really good here. Um, some of the staff discussions that we had at the end of the year as we were looking at the placement of advocacy. So um, we always have the discussion of if we should have it in the morning so that the students start out their day with their advocate teacher or should they have it at the end of the day. Um, one of the things about the end of the day is that when we have students that are leaving for sports and activities, then they're missing core classes. And so the other thing that we're looking at is maybe trying to develop a schedule where there's nothing but elective seventh hour, which that's really difficult to do, but um, that's something that we could do for the following year. And so we just want to not have those core classes that kids are missing out on. Um, we also talked about student behavior and how there has been an increase in the issues that we had with student behaviors. And so one of the discussions that I, I thought was very interesting is that a lot of the students say that it's no big deal to get lunch detention and they did not like after school detention when we had after school detention. And when COVID happened, we stopped doing the after school detention. So that's something that we may wanna look into reinstating this fall is having the after school detention. Um, and you know, when it was brought to my attention that you know the kids are saying that's no big deal for lunch detention, you know, we have a lot more athletes in our lunch detention than we've ever had in after school detention. And that's because if they have after school detention, they have to you know abide by that, fulfill that before they can do their activities. And so um, I think that that really made kind of a big difference. For them and so I know that it is a little bit of a budget issue because we usually do have to pay for a para or a teacher to um, attend that after school but that's something that we probably should consider um, and then just you know lying pride to a lot of our staff members we had you know probably the best turnout for our high school um, teachers and staff attending graduation this year and it was really nice to see everyone there and they were all excited and and um, it, it really looked nice that they had the, the flower corsage and stuff. So, so that was really greatly appreciated. And then I do have a lot of teachers who have volunteered to interview at any time if they need any, if we need anyone. So, um, so I want a huge thank you out to them. And then Mark and Becky for our transportation. You know, with all of our summer learning programs, you know, they're asking where is this kid getting picked up. You know, and they're making the phone calls and figuring it out. So you know, just big kudos to those two. Um, and then of course, you know, everyone who's working in the building. Um, I know they're 
they've pulled everything out of the classrooms already and they're waxing floors and I accidentally walked across the band for the day because it wasn't marked off and yeah, it was still had that wax on it. So I had to go and apologize to Paula on that one. But, um, but no, everything's looking pretty good here. So. All right. Any questions for Sue? When it comes to that curriculum, is that something that you as admin explore and bring to us or how does the process work for that so that way we're on top of that? Yeah, typically as admin we will look at it because we always want to get in a few samples and get an estimate estimate of the cost. Um, you know, some of the programs we can actually get some of the funds through titles, so like our math and our English, the seventh and eighth grade portion we're seeing through title funds, but um, the other and that's why Social studies because it doesn't it isn't covered under anything that's probably gonna be a little bit of a bigger budget. And then we also but we also might want to wait to make sure that we have curriculum that will um, include all of the new mandates that legislation is having, you know, like the civics in the eleventh and twelfth grade and the Holocaust. So yeah. okay. All right. Thank you, Sue. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Well, we'll move on to uh, Superintendent Belshack. Okay. First thing, just uh, uh, to piggyback on the MTSS meeting that we had, that was all six of our school districts that are involved in the Rum River Special Ed Co op. And um, that multi MTSS is for the multi tiered student supports, I believe is what the actual words are. And what it is, is trying to have the best education for tier one, which is all of our kids, general education kids, and then kids that struggle, then we go to tier two and have interventions that help get more, um, get, get at the skills that they, they need. And then um, three would be the highest level of interventions for, for students. And so this was something that um, has been discussed with the number of special education students in our districts across the co-op and what we could do to make sure that we're meeting the needs of all of our students. So tier one, all, tier two, tier three, and in the, in the same regard, making sure that all of our um, students that are excelling, that we're meeting their needs as well. So it's not just interventions for kids that struggle, it's interventions to make sure that we're providing the best education for all of our students. So um, that was something that um, in our conversations during the past years, um, has been um, an area of interest with the different districts. And so we're very pleased that there was enough um, funding available in our um, co-op to be able to um, do this study to see where it's going to lead and how we can share those services. And of course, each district is at a little bit different um, different place and their, their, um, their needs might be a little bit different as well. The second thing I'd like to share is Lots of webinar, webinars um, with the legislation on um, action that took place with our 2023 um, legislature. And so I continue to read through. This is a document, 54 pages of impact summary that, um, that came out of um, legislation. And so we have um, all of our organizations are putting together different um, webinars to help bring it into what we need to do in our school systems. And so that would be like our MREA um, at the MSBA, our, um, our um, okay, oh, MASA, M-A-S-A, and then of course the MESPA and the, the high school. So all of our administration organizations are trying to help sort through what's in um, the legislation package. And it's ever changing. It changes every day as far as what we should be doing and what they're suggesting and giving as guidance. And that then leads into why and how we um, celebrated Juneteenth yesterday. And so there are six of our employees that will receive pay for yesterday as a holiday. And the reason for that is that um, there was no way that we could change their schedules to, um, to, to have still their regular um, hours of operation for the week. And so um, we will have six employees. Everyone else, it was a, a change of schedule. For example, our custodians work four tens during the summer. So instead of anybody working yesterday, their four tens are Tuesday through Friday. 
and just doing that maneuvering, changing, um, changing the schedules, but still uh, meeting everyone's hours. Um, the, the five, the six employees that that we could not change uh, would be our Lion Cub Care Center. It would be our food service, and it would be one transportation bus driver that um, needed to drive kids up to Duluth yesterday. So those are the six employees that will be um, impacted. Everyone else had the day off um, uh, as a holiday. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share, the next thing is, um, excuse me, I'm kind of dry mouth here, um, is our AD had asked me to please share with you that they are looking into a baseball spring training camp in Florida this next year. And so it would be in March of 2024. We're accustomed to our, our softball girls going down to spring, camp, um, spring training camp. This time it would be our baseball players and it would be for students in grades, our athletes in grades nine through 12. And it's um, approximately would be just before our regular spring se um, season starts for the kids. So um, we're looking at either the first or second week of March. But Mr. Besser wanted me to make sure and share it with you tonight. So you've got some firsthand information that it's coming. And then as it unfolds and they have all the details on how they're going to um, raise these funds, that will come to you um, through Keith being able to report with you. And then also, um, this coming Thursday, we will be hosting the high school secretary interviews. Um, it will be from 12.30 to 3.30. And if there's any interest, if any of you can um, share um, in that, that actual process, please let me know um, that, and we will add you to our, our group. Um, right now, I believe we have five or six people that will be um, part of the team for the high school secretary. What day was that? It's going to be Thursday starting at 12.30, and we should be done by 3.30. Um, there are five applicants that will be interviewed on that day. And the last comment, um, as far as my part, it's um, busy every single day here. Um, it, it is surprising. Um, you would think that when summer has come, it would really slow down, but it still is very, very busy. Um, I did want to add one thing, too, to the advocacy discussion from Mrs. Davis. We also um, have a group, um, the student council group for sure, has asked to see if we could create an actual advocacy that is the student council members. Because then instead of having to release kids for meetings, they'd already be together in that advocacy and they could actually um, be getting more accomplished, and that's their goal. Um, I think you've realized over this past year that our student council um, students are very active in wanting to make a difference in their school. And this would be one way that it possibly could happen for them. And that would be comprised then of students in grades nine through 12 that are already on student council. And I believe right now there are 11 students that are already identified and there would be another um, four or five students after the, the um, application process in the fall. So seeing if we can make that happen um, for our kids as, as well. And then um, comment from our maintenance department, best student group of workers that Paul Jacobs has ever had at school this year. They have been um, really making great strides in the amount of work that's being done. They are a collective group of, there are four students, um, two girls and two girls and two boys. And they have just been really making headway. Might be one girl, three boys. Um, and so excellent with that. And then just wanting to piggyback on that question about curriculum. A whole lot of our curriculum came from the ESSER funds. Over $50,000 of the curriculum um, was, was brought in through that COVID ESSER money. And I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that, that was another one of the uses of that, that money. So with that, unless you have any questions, that would be my report for you tonight. Does levy money kind of, uh, cover any portion of that now that we have that in, in there? The levy money um, based on you, our operating levy money, right. um, that can be used for new programs. It can be for retention of, of teachers. Um, it can be um, used for equipment. So like we um, have earmarked, I believe it's 8% is going to be earmarked for technology equipment in the classrooms. Um, so in short answer, yes. 
it could be if that's how we design using um, those funds coming into the district. Any other uh, questions or thoughts or anything? Thank you. All right, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, move on to board members. Any uh, board members have anything to report on tonight? Okay. Don't all jump at once. Um, I only have a couple things. Um, this was right after um, our last board meeting in May, is we had our student council um, follow-up meeting um, that I attended with the entire student council along with Kathy. Um, it was a very good discussion um, as to what uh, was going, what is going on inside of the school district, what's going on inside the stu student population, um, just how they want to approach it, how they feel as if though things should go moving forward, and it was a really good conversation to have with them. Um, I am excited to participate more in that. Um, it's very valuable to have, I believe, a board member um, participate in that conversation due to the fact that we don't know what the student population always is going on and what their viewpoint is. So it's good to hear um, feedback from them as to what is going on and what's happening with them and how they feel as if how things should go. Um, so that was a good conversation. Um, and the only other thing is, is I know Gary's going to follow up with it, but we had a finance facilities meeting uh, last Thursday. Um, lots of things to be done, lots of things to do, lots of um, requests, um, of course. Um, it's 30 years old, lots of things to fix, but uh, no, it was really good. Um, Mark brought a spreadsheet over, I wish I would have had it and made some copies so everybody could see. Did he, did he give you one of them? It, was, it had a compare. It was a comparison between the um, a diesel bus and an electric bus, and it was uh, pretty interesting to see the differences in them um, on what um, maintenance cost is from A to B and how that all works and what um, what the total value of that bus is in the end. So it was uh, really interesting to see that, and then we had. Good conversation about the bidding process um, coming up for all the excavation and stuff. So it'll be uh, Gary. I'll let Gary have all of that. Um, but uh, and yeah, we had good conversation with the AD on some things that he's looking at doing um, on the facility. And yeah, anything else? I I didn't bring the agenda with, and I can't quite remember everything that all happened there, but. It was uh, it was good good conversation. Of course, um, an hour and a half meeting went over two hours, so always good conversation. <laughs> but that's how it goes. But uh, no, it was good, and I believe that's all. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge the um, Ogilvy track team for going um, to the state shoot last Monday, the twelfth. We spent the whole day there, and I believe we had twelve athletes. Attend? Good question. I'm I've not. counted how many were in my picture. So I think it was 12. <laughs> 13. We were missing one. We were missing okay. one. Um, and so, yeah, they all did really great. It was a good day. Really good day out there. And we also have some of them trap members going to nationals in Michigan here in a couple of weeks. Very exciting. So, yeah. Um, then. Anyone else have any uh, reports? I guess the only other thing we've been working on is ongoing contract negotiations. So we're moving forward on that. All right, that will go to the uh, student school board members. Um, I believe you all got Cole's report. Correct. Right. Yes. Uh, like you can highlight some things, absolutely. And this will really be very helpful yeah. for Haley um, because she and I talked about, you know, that's one of the responsibilities. And so this way she could kind of see how Cole has been um, putting or crafting his, his reports. Okay, so baseball, the varsity baseball team wrapped up their season with a loss in the section playoff game to Pine River Packets. It was a great season for the team, and thank you to all who made it possible and to the incredible seniors that are leaving. The football team has a camp at the UMD campus in Duluth from the 19th of June to the 22nd, happening this week. 
weightlifting, there has been both indoor weightlifting for the girls and outdoor lifting for the guys in the morning and evenings, Monday through Thursday. Thanks to Mr. Besser and Jill Bednar for helping out with this great program. It's great for our athletes. Summer baseball is in full swing with all of our teams having aims. It is such a good experience for our youth and great for their development and their baseball skills. Meals at the school. This is other. Meals at the school. The, the school is providing meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner during the summer. This is a great program that helps our families in need in our community. The time that the lunch ladies put in to provide this is very appreciated. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, thanks for reading that. All right, we'll move on uh, to other district employees. Anyone have anything to report tonight? All right, I will move on uh, item eight. Create a motion to approve uh, the May 22nd, 2023 school board <coughs> regular meeting minutes. So moved. Motion by member Hines. Can you a second? Second. Second by member Beck. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, item nine, personnel. Do the resignation first. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the resignation of Christina Macho, elementary teacher, effective June 21, 2023? So moved. Motion by Member Schroeder. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Hines. Discussion. We want to make sure that it's upon approval of the Malacca School District. Mm. And that's why it is effective June 21st. Okay. So it's effective tomorrow. So basically, we're going to well, approve her resignation letter as stated. As because it says absolutely as presented. Yep, as it's presented. Because it is contingent on that. So, all right. Um, any other discussion on that? I'm hearing hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Motion passed unanimously. All right. Uh, go on to the retirement. I get a motion to approve. <coughs> We get a motion to approve uh, retirement of Lori DeYoung, effective September 15, 2023. So moved. Motion by Member Hines. I get a second. Second. S second by Member Kings. And the discussion needed on that. All right. With no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, we'll go on to the contracts. All right, can I get a motion to approve the contracts for 2023-24 school year effective July 1, 2023? It was D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, and M. So moved. Motion by Member Kings. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Uh, discussion on any of them? Mr. Chair, just to um, point out letters D, E, F, G, H, and I. Those are, um, those are the contracts of people who were here last year, but because they're either out of field or tier one or tier two, um, we had to wait until, um, until the, the posting, the 60 days, in some cases, 15 days, in other cases, until that had expired. And so these are people that are basically re re um, receiving a continuing contract with us. And then letters K, L, and M would be um, new contracts. So the position has changed or it's a new person coming into the district, just for that clarification for you. Thanks, Kathy. Mm -hmm. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passed unanimously. 
All right, we're on item 10, contract for fiscal year 2023-2024. Do we need to do any of these separate or not? Yeah, the only one that you would need to do separate is the Minnesota State High School League because that has a resolution that must be um, read on okay. um, so, the meeting. All right, so we are, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for a motion to approve items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I, J, K, L, and M at this time. So moved. Motion by Member Hines. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Kaning's uh, discussion on them. Um, I believe Kathy sent all the details mm -hmm. on all them. All right, so. All right, so with no uh, discussion need on that, we're going to do a roll call vote on them. Uh, Member Schroeder? Aye. Member Cannings? Aye. Member Beck? Aye. Member Hines? Aye. I will vote aye as well. Motion passes unanimously. All right, now we will do item uh, 10 each. Um, so I need a motion to approve the Minnesota State High School League membership. 2023-2024 resolution for membership in the Minnesota State High School League. Resolved that the governing board or entity of Ogilvy High School located in the state of Minnesota delegates the control, supervision, and regulation of interscholastic activities and athletics referred to in Minnesota statute section 128C.01 to the Minnesota State High School League and so hereby certifies to the State Commissioner of Education as provided for by Minnesota statutes. Further, further resolved that the school listed is authorized by this, the governing board of said school district or school to renew its membership in the Minnesota State High School League and participate in the approved interscholastic activities and athletics sponsored by said league and its various subdivisions. Further resolved that this governing board or entity hereby adopts the constitution, bylaws, policies, rules, and regulations of said league and all amendments thereto as the same as are published in the latest edition of the league's official handbook on file at the office of the school district or school, or as appears on the league's website as the minimum standards governing participation in said league sponsored activities and athletics. Further, the administration and responsibility for determining student eligibility and for, and for the supervision, supervision of such activities and athletics are assigned to the official representatives identified by this governing board or entity. Signing this resolution for membership affirms that this governing board has reviewed all required membership materials provided by the league, which defines the purpose and value of education based activity and athletic and programs and defines each each member of schools responsibilities. Member schools must develop and publicize administrative procedures to address eligibility suspensions related to student code of responsibilities, bylaw 206.2, violations for students participating in activity and athletic programs by member schools. The above resolution was adopted by the governing board or entity of the school or district and is recorded in the official minutes of said board and it hereby is certified to the state commissioner of education as provided for by law. All right, so we have a motion by Member Kanings. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Member Hines. A discussion on that. Mr. Chair, just to point out that Minnesota State High School League has um, completely changed their process with this resolution other than the resolution itself. So, um, Kathy, as our clerk, you'll be receiving a DocuSign document um, after all of this information from tonight's meeting is put into the, the DocuSign document. And so everything is, is electronic now. 
Um, and it's, you know, that's the way they want this to be done. But the resolution itself is exactly um, <coughs> what Member Keynes has, has read to us. I do not know what the Minnesota State High School League fees are this year. And so we'll hope to find that out very soon and share that with you. But this is the resolution that is due by July 31st so that we can continue to be a part of the league. Right, so then we will need to approve the fee, whatever it is, when yep. we get the info. Yep, I will bring that back to you um, just again so that you're in, you're, you're acknowledging it. All right, uh, any other questions? All right, all those in favor of that say, or say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion passed unanimously. All right, move on to the action items. Can I get a motion to approve uh, the June claims? Motion to approve June claims in the amount of $275,000. $843.79. Motion by Member Canning, second. Second. Second by Member Hines. Uh, discussion on that? <clears throat> All right, hearing none, now I'll do a roll call vote. Member Hines? Aye. I will vote aye as well. Member Beck? Aye. Uh, Member Canings? Aye. Member Schroeder? Aye. All right, motion passed unanimously. All right, uh, I okay, get a motion to approve the revised budget 2022-2023 uh, school year. So moved. Motion by Member Hines, can I get a second? Second. A second by Member Canning. Is there any discussion on that? Sure. <laughs> yeah. What do you got for us, Brooke? All right, so on the left hand side is the approved preliminary budget. Let you guys back in June, last year, June of 22. Next to it is the revised budget for the 22 23 school year. Next column is all the expenses through May 31st. And then the difference is on the side from the prelim budget to the revised budget. And then next, there is a four page list of all of the revisions that have been made throughout the year. Um, a lot of them were already done prior to me starting. So, I mean, I will attempt to answer any questions, but if not, I'll just get back to you. I'll just read through them quickly. Um, number one, these are all for the revenues. The title was currently bubble at 124000 and it was revised at the end of April with the exact amount of $115,166.46. Number two, prior year title, initially budgeted at 15154 The end of April when it was revised, it was up to 20146 Number nine was a snowfall grant for 1975 and the bus camera grant of $13,014.54. Um, number four is just co-correction. Number five is the bridge to kinder money, um, 6875 that they are using this summer. Number six was originally budgeted at $38,054.71, is now 20000 Number seven was a supply chain grant for milk for the food service, 13889 Number eight is interest of 30000 Number nine was MA received but wasn't in the budget initially, 4690 Number 10, um, unexpected donations. In the beginning of the year, just put in a rough $500, had no idea. We ended up adding to that another $6,300 in donations. Um, number 11, another just miscellaneous revenue, additional $22,000. Number 12, ECM fundraiser, another $11,500. 13, just a title for adjustment. Number 14, another adjustment to the ESSER funds. 15, scholarship money, $7,000. 
16 um, free and reduced numbers went up, so there's an additional 11,400 in food service. 17 sale to adults, 5,000 or yeah, 5,898 dollars. 18 line of care fees, 6,600. Number 19 LTFM interest, 7,404. Number 20 is the referendum. Ten million seven hundred sixty-four four hundred sixty-six and ten cents. All of it came in in one chunk, and then when expenses come in, money just gets transferred from our spire account so we can pay the bills. And fund twenty-one is all of our student activity accounts with, as a total adjustment of four thousand one hundred dollars that they had brought in fundraisers or whatever else they whatever else they do with them. There's lots of different items that come in. Expenditures, number one, Eller's fee went up from 750 to 850. Two, bond expenses, 1,249,867.88. Missed the number there. A non-instructional cost, they went up another 5,553.53. Number three um, was the snow plow. Some of it was granted that 1975 in this fund there was already 2000 budgeted for it so it's just a difference of $25. Four is the actuarial it is a partial is 2000 but we paid for the full actuarial actuarial of 8500 so that was an additional $6500. Um, kindergarten we just added back in their $200 supply budgets. Number six the max effort of 158, 289.94. Number seven, the budget was reduced by 1272.24. Number eight, the referendum, it was never in the budget initially because it wasn't even passed. So that has been paid out um, $1,200,000. Number 10, just an adjustment in a supply budget. Same with number 11. Number four, salaries and fringe just needed to be moved around. Same thing with number 13, salaries and fringe just started out in some title, it wasn't enough, and had to move. So like, now we have more detail. 14, um, another maximum effort wasn't in the and I'm not really 100% on all of the maximum effort. Lori was explaining it to me, so I can always get more detail for that. 15 swimming supplies of 20,000. 16 had to reduce by 17,500. Same was 17, 38, 337, 67. 18, this 2000 was just removed from the ESSER funds. 19, um, adjustment to an actual curriculum cost that was priorly in there. Number 20, health insurance for the K3 interventionist and all of the $100 that every um, employee got through the district for insurance going up, that costed $48,830. 21 is the climbing wall that was approved for $18,000. 22, um, a curriculum adjustment, didn't cost as much, so that was 38.21 back to us. Number 23 was just a code correction. 24, just adjusting actual costs, same with 25. 26, I believe this was moved from one ESSER to the other, so really no money transfer, 27. Increase the supply budget. It was in community ed. 28 was the teacher laptops that were approved for ESSER. 29. Sorry, it's on two pages. Oh, just had to adjust the original budgets. 30, again, had to add to the original budget. It was ESSER, just how it's, it's budgeted at the beginning of the year, prior to everything being finalized, things have been have moved around quite a bit. 
31, code correction, no money change, 32, um, we lowered the, bill, the milk budget since we had the supply train grant that came in, which references in 33, 34, had to in, oh, increase supplies of all the um, plastic where everything else the kitchen needed since the dish room wasn't working, 35, code correction, 36, code correction, 37 is the scoreboard, the revenues, um, but the expenses, I believe they weren't in the budget at the beginning of the year because we didn't, did we get the scoreboard this beginning of the year? This one was prior to me starting. 38, COVID grants decreased. Uh, they had prior year funds, which went away, kept them as current year funds, and it was a different amount than what was initially, initially budgeted. 39 was code correction, 40 the electricity costed almost 9,000 more than initial budget, 41 is the bus camera grant, um, then funds are still not here, should be soon, 42 is another grant that wasn't initially budgeted, um, 43 looks like the, oh this is the grant for the teacher laptops that got paid out, um, 44 just an adjustment per contracts. 45, um, this was just code corrections, moving around funding, like all fundraise stuff so they could be more specific and trackable with their own accounts. 46 was an adjustment per contracts and 47 is just the remainder and moving from a title grant. So, lots. All right, got any questions for Brooke on that so far? Just, just so that um, it's as clear as it can be. Because the referendum money is in the budget already, or has it has been received, that's why when you look at your first summary page, it shows that um, our end of fiscal year 23 is sitting with a positive $10,907,438.50. And, and that's wonderful, but just want to make sure that in reality, you understand that that's money that has been received by the district, but of course, the expenses will be coming all throughout um, our fiscal year 24. Okay. Do you guys have any questions on that? Or are you ready to vote on it? Mm -hmm. What do you want to review? Well, you, Corey. Um, one question on the bus camera grant. So we're still waiting for that? The fund should be here. Cameras have been in. I realize that. I thought that that was made directly to the uh, um, supplier, not to the school. No, that will come to the school. I know that the state had sent out some more information recently on that, so I want to check on that. Okay. And we did receive information from our transportation mm -hmm. department today that um, that it has all been approved and that the, um, the check should be on its way. And it might be because of maybe that the, they have changed the procedures, um, but with us being in on that first the first entry level grant, um, it may have been done differently. And so it's there as a revenue, it's coming as a revenue, um, and it will be received in fiscal year 23, and that's why it needed to be on um, in your documents. All right, any other uh, questions as well on that? 
Well, with that, we'll do a roll call vote. Member Beck? Aye. Member Kings? Aye. Member Schroeder? Aye. Member Fires? Aye. I will vote aye as well. Motion passed unanimously. There is now we we'll go on to 13. I get a motion to approve the proposed 2023-24 school year budget. So moved. A motion by Member Hines. Can I get a second? Second. A second by Member Kanin's uh, discussion on that. So that's this other sheet? Yep, that's the other sheet. Um, so the left hand column is, I use the numbers from this revised budget that you just approved for 22 23. Mm -hmm. The next one is the proposed budget for the 23 24 school year. And then just, I also put in all the expenses through today's date that we've expent so far in 23. And some of the expenses have gone down from fiscal year 23. So some of the revenues, um, there's just a lot of unknowns still. We haven't, I mean, the last projection model that I looked at wasn't, I still had March numbers. So I know Kathy said she had got some other numbers that she was gonna share with you too. If need be, I don't, just a lot of unknowns. And this again is because of legislature and the legislature, um, the changes that are going to be continuing as uh, again, everything is, is sorted out. And so what we've done in the past, we know that this is not 100% right on. And it does need to have approval by June 30th. And the, the reason why it's so important that it's, that it's approved is because then operations can continue as we go into July 1st and into the new fiscal year. But we want, and, and so what we've done before um, uh, in the past at Ogilvy schools and other districts too, is we're going to be asking you to approve 80%, 80% of this um, this budget, um, proposed proposed budget, then knowing that there are going to be changes. And we will bring to you on at the July 24th meeting a an updated um, actual budget for fiscal year 24. But if so, we do need an approval tonight. Um, in order to continue operating business as of July 1st. And again, legislature changes. Um, there will be an up, updated policy, or excuse me, updated um, proposed budget projected that would come to you at the next meeting. <clears throat> All right. So if we're approving 80%, do we need to redo our your motion. Post motion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know how to catch you. You know, at the beginning of the the motion to um, to share with you what we were going to need to do tonight. So. Okay. It was mine and Nate's. Mine and Nate's. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Yeah. Heinz motion. All right. So we can change that to eighty percent of what's presented. Yeah, I do. I'm just thinking about how to word that. Because I need to first cancel. I need to amend. Just amend the motion and say that we're only approving 80%. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So, motion uh, proposed 2023 2024 school year budget approval amended to reflect approving 80% of the proposed budget today and the final approval at the July business meeting. Okay, so now we have a new motion by Member Hines. So we have a second on that one. Thanks. Second by Member Canning's uh, discussion on the, that change to 80%. I think it's all pretty clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got something made? This is only because we don't know what legislature is doing. Yeah. Is that correct at this point? What changes are we looking at? 
possibly coming. All different um, types of grant monies. Oh, okay. um, the actual um, the actual forecast of the four percent increase um, for gen general a you know general aid for our students. Mm -hmm. So um, that has not been reflected completely in our in our proposal. Or the, pro yeah, the proposed budget. Same thing with food service, since everything yep. is free now. They haven't disclosed anything of what they're what they're paying. Okay. Yeah. So the revenues for yeah. food service, um, with that change, the, the revenues for um, unemployment insurance, the revenues for um, the anything else that they have um, shared that would be a mandate that they say they're going to either, either provide partial um, support for it or um, in full, but we have not received those numbers, then that would show them paying something in full to our district. Okay. So it's then, um, it really truly is a mess right now. So you expect to have that information by the July meeting? Boy, we sure or, hope so. We sure hope so. Well, Does the yeah. state have a deadline for when they need to make those final decisions? <laughs> they're, they're putting out um, some items they're sharing by July 1st, some items they're sharing by July 15th. Some items they're putting into place August 1st. Some are January 1st of 2024. And so they have all these different dates. And again, you know, 54 pages of things. And of course, not everything impacts our school district, but many of them do. And so um, they're sorting that all out. And, and again, our administration team is, a, is attending as many webinars as we possibly can. And uh, Mr. Koenigs had mentioned June 26, June 26, and both he and Brooke are going to that meeting over at Resource Training Solutions, and that's where many um, many of our organizations are going to be represented there, and they're going to share the most up-to-date impact from legislation for our districts. So really, I, I'm excited to get some answers, and hoping that many of those answers come on that meeting. Monday. June 26th. So June next meeting we should have some idea of what's going on for sure. Yes, we will. So then if there's other adjustments that are going to come after that business meeting, will we have to amend our budget later on as these things come in? And that's where until January. Exactly. Exactly. That's why with you, um, you know, with you approving the 80%, that's going to keep us safe. It's going to keep us being able to, you know operate into July, then at the next meeting, updated, the amended, um, and as, as we go through legislative changes, we'll continue to bring you updated um, updated budgets. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions on that? No, thank you. All right, hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote on that. Member Haynes? Aye. Member Schroeder? Aye. Member Kings? Aye. Member Fatt? Aye. I will vote aye as well. Motion passed unanimously. All right, on item 14. All right, we're going to look for a motion to approve the certification and updated district population estimate resolution. Certification of updated district population estimate resolution certifying the population estimate for the 2023 payable 2024 levy of independent school district number 333. Whereas the independent school district 333 has experienced an increase in population from the 2020 census figure of 3,420 to the current census figure of 3,499 as determined by the state demographer. Be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 333 that the census figure of 3,499 be certified to the state demographer for approval of use in the 2023 payable 2024 revenue calculations. For the adoption of the foregoing resolution was... Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so then... That's it then? Okay. That's correct. All right, so I have a motion to get a second on that. Second. 
second by member Beck uh, discussion on that? And this is for community education okay. um, because the funds for community education are based on the census of our of our school district and that's how the revenue comes in. And so this is something that um, Karine Anderson um, had shared was being required of all school districts in the state. Okay. All right, uh, with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, on to item 15, uh, okay, a motion to approve uh, the referendum uh, site excavation project bids uh, for the playground and the uh, track and north trail. So moved. Motion by Member Kings, take a second. Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Discussion on that. You can see it out now. Getting there and kind of just hand all this out. It's a pretty big document. I just want to keep that recap in there so we remember what's happened yep. prior bid openings. <laughs> um, for the new business, obviously, we did do the bid opening last Thursday for the site excavation package. Uh, we did get four bids, which is also reflected on the I kept the full uh, bid tabulation form with all bids just so everybody can keep on the front of them. Um, the low bid was Bursky excavating out of rice. Um, quite a bit lower than the others, but and it is it did come in about forty six thousand two hundred and forty seven dollars under budget, and they had the two alternates that we can certainly discuss. We did a little bit, um, and then with the savings on the site package back down, um, if we continue to move forward and do all the ventilation projects um, that were previously stated, um, we use quite a bit of the remaining contingency and um, interest earnings and stuff like that, leaving us only with 197000 for that. So I did some value engineering with the HVAC package items that are also listed. I was able to carve out $367,600, getting us down to about $288,000 over budget, or about 5% from our original 26 almost percent. Um, and we also had the unbudgeted added scope items in the offices and media center. So um, if it, the board chooses, we'd request to use that 398 out of the nine, 398, 685 out of the 963, 519 remaining. And then the district would retain $564,834 in remaining contingency and for other scope items that come up. Um, all the other items that the district's doing directly with cooperative purchasing and so forth, those items are still moving forward like gym bleachers and stuff like that. So the big thing there is really kind of just remove the shop air handling units because they're just air handling units that are serving shop. We are just trying to upgrade everything, but it's still the same ventilation. It would just be newer units. Um, and then the auditorium rooftop unit, it's actually going to be a rooftop unit out back. Um, but knowing that the condensing, it was just repaired about a month ago. That's one of the reasons I took those items. Um, Johnson Controls, we worked with them. There's a duplica duplication in the bidding process. Johnson had the airflow measuring stations as well as the manufacturer, so we were able to about about 100000 on there. I did solicit another bid for controls because I thought it was high. That number actually did not come in any lower um, It because of the higher or because of the new head end system and everything they had to put in and upgrading the existing controls on units that weren't being served. So with that said, I know we were looking to award Bursky excavating, but there's, I don't know if you guys are interested in either the alternates for the perimeter fencing or the football field goal posts. And then the other items on the HVAC section, I just am looking, hopefully getting the wording of them um, as we need to order lighting just to get lighting here on site for those classrooms that we're doing this fall. And then I do know we have a chiller 
price increase coming up August 1st, which is also a one year lead time. And I know there's some areas that the admin team would like me to jump on yet this summer for um, the mail room and hopefully some media center upgrades as well. Any questions? Okay, so basically what you're looking for approval is just the burst, the excavating contract at yeah. this time, and then possibly at the next meeting, you'll have some of this yeah. kind of stuff for us. Okay. I'd like to get those numbers exactly on the HVAC because right. some are still in motion because I'm still yeah. getting some value of engineering working on. I'm just leaving it where we sit. Okay. And then I'm moving that path just to save as much as possible for other projects. I know there's the list is lengthy from the admin team. <laughs> so there's plenty of items that are on, that weren't even up shown on the referendum, but are yeah. still out there. So. Okay. But yes, if we get the first key excavation, excavating approval tonight, then we can move, I'll keep moving down so the path. So these, these other numbers that you're providing to us, these are going to come on our, like you said, on yeah, our July, July 24 meeting. meeting. So that's basically this information. Because you got to get that done before August 1st. Well, well to, I, I just like to get the chiller order, and right. I mean, I guess from the admin team, Superintendent Belshank could probably approve me to have Melrose Electric release the lighting or at least get it ordered. I don't think we'll see any bills prior to the next. We won't see any bills because they're eight weeks out. I just want to make sure we get that lighting. We did promise those seven classroom yeah. teachers yeah. that we would be done with that yeah. before we cover those skylights up, and I just. Keep it in the back of my mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess my thoughts on on the alternates, I mean, I would like to hold off on that. Just they can be done at any time. Exactly. The, the fencing is still pretty good, and we are still replacing the entrance gate. Um, so that'll yeah. still be done either way. The fencing was kept on there as an alternate because at one point, remember, we were adding the three feet raising the whole works up so that at that point the fence basically had to be replaced now it does not and it's in pretty good shape around there okay and what's your guys' thoughts on that on the alternates i say we wait because it's obvious that our contingency funds are going to be pressed to the limits by the time this is all taken care of um due to the way that the atmosphere is right now um, I'm glad you sparked or uh, stated that too, that that was a conversation that we had about the track, um, having that conversation about how the look of it is going to be when it's done. Um, I believe that there was conversation about the, the height. Remember, we had the conversation at the meeting about what we were going to see as a finished product. Um, there was discussion that the track is going to be where it is plus three feet higher than that which is incorrect, that they're actually just going to do a soil correction of three feet and raise the uh, elevation of the track enough to get um, grade away from it and get drainage away from it. Um, the cost to raise it uh, six feet essentially would be such an overwhelming cost to the district that there'd be not feasible um, whatsoever. So there was that discussion being had at our meeting about that. So. Yeah. That is the, that's what's going to happen with that track is it's just going to be a soil correction of three feet and it's going to have enough grade just to create drainage away from it. Okay, so have a discussion on that. If we could just add to that it's the playground that would be the first highest priority. So that work would yeah. definitely be done this summer. This summer. And with the North Trail and track work it could start any time Bursky is ready to start that work, but most likely we're still looking at fiscal year 24. For Correct. Um, 2025. And 25 Benji Besser did recommend that we do it in the spring because they do use the track area as a practice football field. He understands they'd lose track next spring and still have it elsewhere, but then he's not affecting two seasons of sports where next year you get it right on the spring you know, praying that we have good weather next spring, unlike this year. Um, but it would be done prior to any football, knowing that football practice start like August, call it August 1. But. So even though this work might not happen until next year, this price is locked in. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. 
Correct. I would prefer we'd lock them both in now because right. I mean, make sure there's no language in. Nope, I won't say the yeah. number three bidder, their price went up from the value engineering. Yeah. Okay, to yeah, three bid them all. Correct. Yeah. Nope, this is the price that they gave us, and this is what we're going with. And also, for anybody that is questioning what that north trail is, it's actually the trail that goes to Casey's and out to the concession bus garage. The bus garage yep. and out towards the field. So it's that whole. And the reason for that is it kind of this year you could see it a lot of was flooded basically. Yeah. So there's some raising elevations and some better drainage around there as well. And again, to state that it did now come in under budget. Mm -hmm. And um, great thanks to Gary and to yeah. you as a board by saying let's go out for for rebidding it. And that rebidding then did end up um, you know basically saving us um, our taxpayers. A bundle of money and so it was a very good move so if they wanted to start this in the fall you wouldn't then is that what from the athletic director's position he would prefer to have the athletic track for this fall for it's a practice football field as well he'd prefer to have it for football practice and have us do it in the spring is what he said at the facility committee meeting so it could really overlap fiscal year 24 and 25. If it happens before July 1st, you know, and then fin is finished during next summer, then it, it would go into two, two fiscal years. We should also probably, well, it's always nice to do site work started in the fall so it goes through a frost cycle once before it's finished. That's why. Mm -hmm. I would 100% agree with you. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't. Quite understand why if it was capable of going starting this fall when we wouldn't. Well just throwing it out there. Uh, absolutely. And then the, the, the thought is that's the practice uh, field for football. So it means that then all the practice would have to be on the our regular football field. It's so we'd have to be taking some precautions to uh, maintain the, the stability of that ground as well. We don't have anywhere else that we can use as an alternative. Spot. I mean, obviously, we don't have goalposts and stuff, but I agree with you. But they have to be creative. I mean, well, yeah. and I think that's a conversation we can have with the activities yeah. director. There might yeah. be some alternatives there that we haven't looked at if we Possibly. need to. So, and if you guys find out any more information sooner, better because then I could direct first if, if it is this fall, they could just start going right away this summer. Well, depending on their schedule. Yeah. So. And I, I will say one more thing, just so we're saying it, that by waiting till next year, he, I, we would like it to go through that, but by saving your funds until next year, you're also gaining That's interest too. Interest so I, I just want to make that point because obviously HVAC package won't be happening until next year. So yeah. my numbers I've been tracking, I think Ehlers gave us 48,302 is I believe the number of interest earnings. It might be triple that by having those funds in the bank for that much longer. So, okay. but I do understand your point, Member Shorter. <laughs> I would do anything you can get more work done, the better. Once they mobilize, there's probably two mobilizations in their bid. Sure is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, uh, a roll call uh, member Beck. Aye. Member Canning. Aye. Member Hines. Aye. Member Schroeder. Aye. And I will vote aye as well. I can pass the Thank you. Thank you. All right, 116. I can get a motion to approve the uh, read well by third grade literacy plan for 2023-24 school year. So moved. Motion by Member Hines. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Beck. Uh, discussion on that. And this would be a presentation by Principal Kings. So the read well by third grade literacy plan, so district literacy plan, um, is due to the state every year by June 30th. Um, kind of two big highlights. For two big changes this year compared to our previous years. Um, one is our staff training that we will have in um, our 
science of reading. Um, so we're taking a three-tiered approach to that. We're looking at um, the preschool is going to go through an early letters program, it's called. Um, so our two teachers will go through that. Um, our K-3 teachers are going to go through the letters program um, with coaching from Resource Training and Solution. Um, and then our four through six, fourth through sixth grade teachers are going through um, kind of the extension of that called Aspire. Um, so we're really looking at how do we use the time that we have to use the strategies that are most effective. Um, so if you've heard of Science of Reading, that's kind of the big push right now. It's um, looking at really the skills, going back to the fundamental skills and making sure that we're teaching that. Um, so that's the one big addition. Um, and then also updating our data in there as well. So in there, it's the plan is kindergarten through third grade. So we're looking at um, third grade takes our NWEA test, and then K through two take um, our FAST test. Um, unfortunately, we're waiting for um, MBE to come out with their list of approved screeners. Um, so I was told that list is going to come out on June first. Um, so we might. July 1st, I'm sorry, July 1st, so we might need to make a change to the screeners that we use um, because the state's now mandating that. I don't know. I would, I, would, I would guess that we can keep using the screeners that we have, um, but there is a potential change in that as well. Um, so like I said, those are the two big changes to our plan for this year. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, with that, I'll... one other thing I'd like to say too um, with the passive passing of the Read Act that's in the, the legislation, um, the Read Well by Third Grade language is going away. Um, so, this is probably the last time you're going to see it as this. I'm guessing there's going to be some plan that we need that will take its place, um, but it won't be called Read Well by Third Grade. And what right. the state is requiring then is at the end of each um, school year that um, the numbers of students that are not reading at grade level for kindergarten, at grade level for first grade, at grade level for second grade, and grade level at, and at grade level for third grade will need to be reported to the state. So they're expanding it um, to having those benchmarks at each of those primary grades instead of one big, you know, one big report at the end of third grade. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> all right. Motion passed unanimously. All right. I have 17. Uh, I get a motion to approve the staff development 2% set aside. Done. Motion by Member Hines. Second. Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Uh, discussion on that? It is overwhelmingly um, supported by our teaching staff and the one one change that they're requesting this year is that the set aside be thirty thousand dollars and in the past it's been either twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand so we're coming off of a year of twenty five thousand and so how that's divided up then is seventy five percent of that thirty thousand is for um, teachers so it's um, $11,250 for elementary, $11,250 for secondary, and then 25% goes into district um, for like our, all of our OESPA um, employees and district um, at will contract employees. And that is a total then of 7,500. And this is the structure, um, the breakdown of those percentages that has been in place, um, you know, for all the years I've been here. But again, it fluctuates. And the way, the reason it fluctuates is there might not be as much carryover money from the previous year, and the staff might be worried that there wouldn't be enough in order to cover all of the, you know, the conferences and the, the staff development needs of um, each of those levels for the next year. Or it might be that there have been changes to the staff development um, structure. And um, that would be what's impacted it for this year. 
because we had um, at staff, our staff development committee had increased the amount of stipends that um, teachers and would be able to receive and um, all of our support staff as well for like attending conferences or working on curriculum, um, doing some, um, some curriculum mapping. Um, so all of those rates went up and for the first time too, um, we're looking at um, providing ex expenses for um, hotel stays if the conference is more than 50 miles from our district and if it's like a two-day conference because in the past we've re, you know basically required teachers to drive back and forth or they um, pay for a hotel room out of their own pocket and this is a much more professional way of treating all of our staff if they're going to go to a conference that is you know a good length a good distance away from our district Okay, I guess I got I got one question on this. So it's two percent of what? It's that the two percent set aside. Two, you know, two percent. That's the that's the um, title that it's always been given. But basically, it's two percent of the revenues, um, the set aside instead of expecting two percent of the revenues coming into the district. Okay. So instead of you know, if we have a five million dollar revenue. Instead of instead of, uh, instead of, of five million. right, okay. they're saying we'll set aside that two percent, and if you will provide thirty thousand dollars for all of our staff development needs. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other questions on that? Okay. You asked a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, with that, we'll do a regular roll call vote on that one. Uh, Member Cannings. Aye. Member Schroeder. Aye. Member Hines. Aye. Member Beck. Aye. Aye. We'll vote aye as well. Motion passed unanimously. All right. Round of 18. A motion to approve the updated 2023-24 teacher continuing contracts list. And I shared that list with you. And we've added um, Rachel Schmel Schmelzer. Um, oh, let me get a motion oh, I'm first. sorry. Uh, so moved. Uh, member Hines has a motion. Take okay, a second. Second. Second by member Kings. All right. Okay. Yeah. Rachel Schmelzer um, has been in our district. Um, she's been offered a fourth contract, and so she is. Um, she is now considered a tenured teacher in our district. And then, because of like that July first date, um, we have uh, Tanner Hagelin, um, who is now on the list. Because of, and, and I think uh, maybe Mrs. Davis could explain this with Pelsby, um, he was a tier two teacher and now he is not a tier two teacher, or is he still? No, he's a tier three. He's a tier three now because so since he's moved from a tier two to a tier three, then he's going to be on our actual continuing contract <coughs> list. And then the other two teachers that I added at the bottom, that's um, that would be. Uh, recommending that second contract because they are continuing to teach in our district after the first year and and again um, with Mr. Manning with instrumental music that change legislature changed that also and so he um, is not considered a an out of field teacher or even a tier two now he is he was not a, he's no longer considered a probationary teacher because he was tenured in another state with an yes. approved teaching program. So in the past, if, even if they were tenured in another state when they came here, they were non-tenured and hadn't started for three years. Now that's changed. Now, after they have their one year with no teacher improvement plan, then they're considered a tenured teacher. And so this report, I mean, it's just a kind of a tracking tool um, for our admin team and a tracking tool for you as well of where teachers are in in the scope of being here for a second year, third year, and of course the fourth contract is um, considered tenure, and it doesn't, the, the state changed the, the ruling on that too. It doesn't matter if the teacher is a part-time teacher, like say a point four teacher, um, if they have been offered four consecutive contracts, they are tenured in your district. And of course you know with the, that if they're tenured somewhere else, then they become tenured after one year with us. And, and again, the, the, the state has changed. That's one of the new legislative changes too, is 
accepting teachers' credentials from out of state. And that's where Mr. Manning fell into that category. Okay. Uh, any questions for Kathy? Or <coughs> right. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passed unanimously. All right, round of 19, uh, a motion to approve the letting of the bids for our dairy, bread, food suppliers, fuel, and snowfall and quotes for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Motion by Member Hines, can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Beck. Uh, discussion on that? Just that um, we now have put into the quotes propane as a fuel for buses, which wasn't there before. And um, Linda worked with Paul, um, so the, the propane for our tank is now not, you know, the 30,000 gallon tank, but we also um, have a 250 gallon tank that's um, by one of our garages in the back. And so um, that's the, what the fuel, um, the propane is going to be um, quoted for, for that. So change to that, give, um, give a lot of credit to, um, to Linda Spears for working with both um, transportation and maintenance to make sure that our quotes um, were very appropriate and all updated for the needs of the district. And so those dates are, um, they have to be advertised for two, two different weeks. So it will go into the advertiser on July 6th and July 13th. And the bid opening, if any of you would want to attend that, is July 20th at one o'clock. And then your meeting on July 24th will then receive all of the bid information and um, as a board you honor whichever um, vendors you want to select. Okay. You said that goes for two weeks, July 6th and then the following week also July, July 13th. 13th. Yep, and with the bid opening on July 20th. And those are posted where? They are posted, well we have it posted um, in our office but it's also in the newspapers. So, I mean, that's how you actually post it is by putting the ads in the newspapers. There'll be and, some signs in the advertiser. Yes. And um, we keep a list of all of our past vendors that have, um, have provided a quote or a bid to the district in past years. And so they're automatically mailed out um, by Linda Spears to make sure that they don't miss it in the, in the paper. So a really good process, and she does a very good job with that. All right. Well, with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passed unanimously. All right. On to uh, the donations. I make a motion to accept the donation from uh, Lynette Weiss, our superintendent's sister, in the amount of $10,000 to be used by the, dis by the discretion of Superintendent Belshine. And from the Lions Club for $759.68. And that was for port potty services and CPR training kits. So, motion by Member Kings, Kate is second. Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Uh, discussion. Thank you to your sister again. <laughs> You bet. And it's been a number of years she's been doing that already. Yes, it, yes it is. And um, that um, those funds are used for things that um, that public education that we wouldn't normally be able to do because we, we you know there are things that we want to do that we can't use taxpayer money for. So one of the, the biggest examples would be our big gala our retirement um, retirement acknowledgement. Um, that was funded through this, through these movies, to honor people, and that's it goes back to people. So appreciative of that. And as always, thank you to our Lions Club. They're on this list a lot throughout the year, and we really appreciate it. So that we do. We really thank uh, anybody that's willing to give us yes. information. Yep. So okay. thanks again. All right. With that, all those uh, in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. All right, on the non action items. Uh, 21, the handbook's first reading. We got student 
Our student activity, coaches, advisors, preschool, elementary student, and secondary student handbooks. Um, and you said we're going to be able to review some of them in that Google Drive, right? I have the, the high school student handbook is in Google Drive. I just don't like the way that it's something. Okay. To she said the highlights too. Yeah. What's changed? Yeah. Okay. That was. Oh, right? yeah. That's that was right. the only thing that was missing was the highlights. All right. Uh, anything else on that, Kathy? I think um, I think Mr. Koenig should just speak just a little bit about. Um, the new requirements for our handbooks because right. again legislature yeah. so there's some big changes that are going to come in our handbooks um, there's some additional policies that we need to include in there um, some of those policies are brand new policies too so part of the, the meeting i was at we we're talking about well, how we put that in our handbooks when our handbooks need to be approved before the policies go through all of their readings um, so we, we talked about that as well um, there's some changes to student discipline that needs to be in there as well. Um, there's a change to um, discipline review practices that need to be added in there. Um, so we're still waiting to get the notes from MSBA from, from the meeting uh, before we can actually put those things into our handbooks. They'll look significantly different than what they have in the past. And what that too means is that we might need to be putting out amendments to our student handbooks as the year unfolds. And again, you know, legislature, they work on a, on a calendar year and our school districts work on fiscal years. And so with them having these different dates that they're going to roll out more information really is um, making kind of a mess for us and so we just are going to have to do the best we can like i said possibly put amendments in and then be bringing rolling out those new policies as they're being released and rewritten or written for you know as far as brand new policies right. so and another thing that adds to the difficulty is they have different dates that things need to be implemented too so a lot of them are july 1st um some of them in, in two years, some of them need to be implemented in August 1st. Just keeping all that straight and just taking those as well. One other thing, too, that you might that really has merit here to mention is not only are these screeners, which are assessments that we give kids as they start their school year, being um, dictated by the state, where you know there are certain numbers, certain ones that we can pick from. Same thing with curriculums for reading. So the READ Act, there are going to be, I believe, five or six curriculums, um, actual vendor companies that they will um, allow school districts to use. And if we don't have one of the ones that they have, have selected, then we would need to be purchasing that. And we've been told that the state will um, pay for it, but we don't know if they're going to, how much they would be paying for that curriculum. So there are lots of questions that we have, and we're just waiting, waiting for those dates to find out if we've got the curriculums here, if we have our screener assessments, and and if we don't, then we have to make changes. So it's, um, I think you're getting the message tonight that legislature has really made our, our lives very difficult um, at, in our school districts. All right, any other questions on handbooks for the night? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and then we got our uh, first readings of a whole list of all the through double E. Well, mm -hmm. So, and then we're going to be setting up a meeting with the policy committee going forward on this thing. Right, and so it's all of these um, plus. And so these are the ones that usually are referred to in our handbooks, and these are the ones that we have to have in place before a new school year begins. And so this is, you know, traditional that these would come before you. We have some others that will most likely be added um, as far as like those, those new ones. But I want to also mention the ones that were on our last agenda, they're going to be brought into these also um, because we're at our first reading with those as well. And when our committee meets, 
they're going to be um, going through probably 30, 40 um, different processes um, to make sure that we can start off our, our new year. So that will happen in July before the July 24th um, meeting. And I don't, um, one of the other ones that I wanted to mention, and I'm looking through here, would be that transportation policy also. If you remember, we pulled that transportation policy, yeah, we did. and that needs to be brought um, forward. We have that in place before the new school year um, begins as well. So work to be done. Okay. All right, any other questions on the policies for now? We have to go on to 23, uh, 2023 academic all stars. Those of you got that list emailed to us? That's yep. Good. Good. All right, any questions for Kathy on that? Anything you need to be settled on? Uh, yes. Hang on, Kathy. The, the packets did arrive in homes, correct? Yes, and so the, the kids, um, the kids are pretty excited about it. And we have 29 students that are on this list in grades K through 11. And it really is um, quite an honor to be selected by our staff to represent Oldby Public Schools. And it ends up being a really fun day um, for for the kids. Um, they're they're made to feel very special. Um, there are dignitaries that actually um, shake their hands as students um, walk across the stage and receive their certificates. There's always um, some type of entertainment for students um, that um, that actually go to the um, the the um, the gathering of the of the, the all stars, and um, that happens on August fourth this year. And and again, it's a it's a big deal. It's it really truly is to be recognized across the state of Minnesota. Oh, and the last thing is they they do a mini Minnesota trivia, or they have in the past years, and kids are able to win state fair tickets, and they give out quite a few of those. So if you are people that like to go to the state fair, and your children are on this list, and you want them to feel extremely. Um, important as they are for being nominated by their grade levels, um, please make sure and take advantage of that opportunity to have our kids shine. Is that still down at Mall of America? Yep, Mall of America. All right, uh, we have we got the new 24. Uh, that was the fundraiser student council 50 50 raffle at the Oakley Raceway on July 22nd. And that goes through the approval process with the AD and your and your um, high school admin superintendent, and then um, and then they, you just need to know about it. And since this is going to happen on July twenty second, is before your next meeting. So I believe that the boys basketball already did a 50-50 raffle. Also, does anybody know how successful that was? I didn't hear back from. Cole said they did pretty good. I didn't necessarily get a number, but yeah, he was really excited about it. Mm -hmm. I think I seen a sign at the racetrack. It was like twelve hundred dollars or something. The winner got so that was yeah. Be, oh, that so sounds correct. Yeah, so it'd yeah. be twenty four hundred mm -hmm. probably. So mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was our twenty four. Uh, <clears throat> anybody have another? I do. All right. Sorry, Kathy. No, it's good. I'm glad you do. Um, I, since we're all here, I just wanted to see if we could talk about scheduling that work study session. Oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you took my question. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I just wanted to see if there was a date we could figure out for that work study session to talk about all the stuff we've got to hammer out this summer. Yep. Um, let's see. So you want to get it done yet this summer then? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I think a lot of other people would like us to get it done this summer too. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so calendars. Let's what works for everybody. And what days are you thinking this month? Are, I'm are you pretty open. I, let's just see what everybody's got. Summer's busy, so we'll figure something out. Uh, you want to try to do well, Kathy, now you're gone next week, right? Right. So okay, so so there is some time this week if it if it fits with people's um, schedules. Um, you know, like Thursday for me. Pardon me. Thursdays are bad for me. Thursdays are bad. Yeah, youth softball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So we may need to wait until that um, second week in July. Yeah. That begins on July 10th. Okay, yeah, I guess I can make. I can't do Tuesday the 11th or the 10th for traveling home. What about the Wednesday the 12th? How about that? He doesn't like Wednesdays. Yeah. Oh, I wait, mean, yeah. I, I forgot about that. No, no, that's okay. I, I can if we need to. Well, the thing um, is, what if we, I mean, what time can everyone be here? Does it have to be 6 o'clock or could we do 5.30? I could make it by 5.30. I have to do that. How about you, Casey? I mean, I could do 5.30. I have a base, an access baseball game that night in Princeton. But oh. if that's the only day that works for everybody, I can be here. For the following week is probably. Well, the following week we have all these negotiations on the 21st already. Right. But that it, Friday. It may but. be that, you know, if we use the Monday, that is typically um, we set aside for board meetings. So you're that saying Monday. the 17th then? Maybe. Why don't we uh, work on the 12th and work up to the 17th if it doesn't work? That's fine with me. Yeah, I'm good with We're getting pushy. Or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, should we just say the 12th that you want to do 530 then? Yeah, let's do it. Can you okay, so with that? I think so. So, Wednesday, July 12th at 530. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just be a work study session. Right? That's yeah. 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 Because there's no action being taken on anything. So. No, it's really just to talk about, you know, when we ended the school year discussing voting yep. and actions that they wanted to see done. They wanted, I don't know, if we're reviewing the bullying policy or talking about said, my idea for the work study session was really just to get together, talk about the meetings that we need to have, the things we need to review, get the dates set for those, and make sure that we tackle everything that we sought out to tackle this summer. I was hoping to really have this done already before we're done with June, but um, so I mean that was really my idea for the work study session is just to get an idea, get dates scheduled out. Okay, because as far as that policy, that should be getting reviewed. Just so. isn't that one that has to be reviewed before school starts? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's, uh, five, four, five fourteen. Oh, no, it's on the wrong page. Mm -hmm. The the other thing that um, that I'm going yeah. to suggest is possibly having it as a closed meeting, a work study session because I mean that's fine um, if we just post it that way, then we're covered. Right, and you know you receive the the um, proposals for contracts from our admin administrators, yeah. and of course, um, you know we're coming. That's already past July first. So they you know, wouldn't have a contract in place. And so there really needs to be, um, I believe, discussion on um, on negotiations and using that as a strategy meeting yeah. um, because all of the at-will contract people are, are waiting too. And I mean, that's getting kind of far out. Um, we should maybe even be looking at um, having some of those meetings for negotiations by separate teams sooner than July 13th. We probably should. Yeah. Which, which teams are you speaking of? I'm speaking of, uh, so we've got, we've got two structures for negotiations. We have our two teams um, for at-will contracts. Correct. And then those same two teams are for OEA and OESPA. Correct. And um, if you remember, too, I sent you an email saying that OESPA is also now asking for, hey, when can we sit down and meet? And now we also have our principals with their contract proposals. And um, these contracts are there. July 1st is when they expire. So we really um, need to be moving forward on those as well. Um, are we ready with the numbers to keep working on them? Because that's, that's the other problem. We haven't received our information, so we we have. Well, I know you're waiting for legislature, so yeah. are we still waiting? That's that's my question. We have we have enough to go on right now to start. 
Okay. And what I will do is um, I'll share with you, I'll send you an email with some of that information okay. as well. Um, but we, we do need to move forward and as the information is coming in on a daily basis, basically. Okay. And I'm so sorry that, you know, next week is, is out. But again, I'll go back to, you know, if, if need be, if there is a group that would like to meet this Thursday night, um, you know, we, we could move forward with that too, with the at-will contracts. Or, um, I know Kathy said that, um, that Thursday wouldn't work for, for her, but maybe the team, the OESPA team, which would be Casey, Tim, and Nate, Maybe you can meet, we could meet with um, OESPA for that initial meeting to get that started as well. What day were you thinking? I, um, I just threw out Thursday. Thursday, Thursday the 22nd. I mean, yeah, if we, if we need to go with the meeting that night, we sure could. What did they have going on that night? Um, so, just so you know, the week of the 3rd through the 10th, I'm going to be in Michigan. So. Yeah. I'm gone. So really the next two weeks, well, you're gone next week and yeah. actually me and Kathy are going to be out in Michigan. With the, with the and that 4th of July week is really tough and we're trying to hold, you know, firm that we don't have any meetings okay. that week, um, if at all possible. But again, if, if um, Casey, Tim, and Nate want to have a meeting towards the end of that 4th of July week. Um, I know the 6th would maybe work for me. That's a Thursday. I don't believe I'm doing anything spontaneous as of yet for that. I'll be home that week. So possibly looking at July 6th then to start the process um, with, the with OESPA or July 6th with um, the at-will contracts that you've already um, heard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we just, you'll make that next step. So, well, you'll have to, you want to send okay. an email out to member Peterson? Yep. To see if he can be involved in that too. <clears throat> so we're talking about doing OESBA negotiations on the 22nd. We, this 22nd, we could, if, that, if, that, if about, that works, we can use that for, you? for the, yes, we could use that as that initial OESPA, and then we can use July 6th with that same team for um, moving forward with um, with at-will contracts, because then that would be after that July 1st. That would be a great 1st. idea, because if we're having both of them in the same evening, um, you might as well plan a sleepover. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so OESPA, um, June 22nd. I'll see if that will work for, for that team. And then July 6th for the next session of your at will, the at will contracts. Mm -hmm. And then we'd be looking at the um, the July, the July 12th would be That's for. That's going to be, you're just going to set that as a closed meeting? Because that'll be whole more about yep. that one. Okay. It sounds good to me. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, you Have you all been getting like a reminder no. from the no. calendar? Nope. Thank like you. <laughs> so I had I received a reminder from our school board calendar today <coughs> in an email. I think that's a per user request. Did you yeah, send email? So These are at no six o'clock, correct? Yes, please. I mean, you'd have to. It'd just be nice if everybody got a reminder. Who set the appointment? Well, I, I managed the calendar. Yep, but who made the appointment for the meeting? So that person would have like to include it every other board member and then probably but if it's a it. shared calendar. Yeah, but they aren't gonna get a notification unless they are a part of the actual meeting appointment. So they can see that calendar, but they have to be part of the appointment. It's part of planning our meetings here. If you made the appointment and only made it for yourself, they would see it if they go on the calendar. But to get a notification automatically sent to them, you'd have to assign them to that meeting. Because okay. yeah. a lot of times there's calendars that have multiple meetings with multiple groups, but everyone gets to see them. You wouldn't want all people that aren't involved with every meeting to get a notification. So you want to just have those included. Okay. 
on every minute, and then they'll get them. Should be under invite, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got a few meetings scheduled for the evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank Perfect. you for that. Mm -hmm. Also. All right, any other others? Bleachers. I am so sorry. They are not going to be in before the school year begins. What are we going to do with that then? Okay, the bleachers, um, we are pushing for MEA week. They need to have five, they need to have a whole week in order to make it happen, and it, and it won't happen by the end of so August. Are our old ones still going to be in? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I thought you'd be. No, 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 no. No, the new ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, sorry. No, the new no, yeah, well. We have a lot of chairs, but we can stay. Yeah. So sorry if that was not clear to you. Um, no, the new lockers oh. will not be able to be installed by the okay. beginning of the school year. And the other thing is um, at the finance facilities meeting, we made uh, an executive decision. We're not going to have any words on the fronts of the, the bleachers. We're not going to have roar put on there. And it's because we can only have it on one side and not the other. Because remember, we needed to go, we needed to take two levels off on the visitor side in order to have the chairs on the floor. And so then it, with it being seven bleachers high, there's not enough room to put the roar. And so you'd only see it on the on the, the home side. And so what we're going to do instead is any kind of graphics and words, we'll either paint it on the walls above the bleachers, or we're looking at having those side panels. Um, usually they're like vinyl covers that, you know, that hide the, the underside of the bleachers and, they, and help keep little kids from going in there. Um, so on those side panels, we can do all kinds of um, artwork um, with, with logos. And so that's what we decided instead. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. All right. No more others? No, no one more. Um, no, your other? Mine is pretty simple. I just want to give a gigantic kudos to Ogilvy Raceway, um, the Ogilvy Fire Department. Um, everybody who participated and helped and did it made uh, and made it work for the Ponto um, benefit. It was a huge success. There was a lot of people there. There was a lot of donations there. And there was a lot of money raised um, for that family. So I uh, just want to give a kudos to that. As a community, this size coming together for that family was unbelievable. And uh, there were several of us here in the room that were part of that. And it was just, um, it was big. And it was a... Uh, it shows what this community can really do um, to pull together and help out a family. So just a huge kudos to everybody who participated. And uh, thank you to all that donated and everything that made that whole situation happen. Yep, it's a very good day. Couldn't ask for better weather for that opportunity. Yep. All right, with that, I'll take a motion for 26. Motion to adjourn at 7.58. Motion by uh, King, take a second. Second. Second by member. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right,